Hello and welcome to another episode of Monkey Box. I'm your host, James, and today I'm joined with Ria Pradeep, the 2016 to 2017 co-president of our team. Hi, James. Hi, Ria. She is also the top machinist and go-to person for programming and operating our computer-controlled CNC mill. And she was also the first girl technical lead on our team. So the topic of this video is the Girl Subsystem Challenge, which is an environment where we challenge the girls on our team to design, machine, assemble, a subsystem on a robot, all by themselves. So Ria, can you tell us a bit more about the challenge? Yeah, sure. So we started the challenge in 2014. Um, we started the challenge because we noticed that a lot of girls who joined the team leaned towards administrative work instead of technical work. So this is a picture of the group in 2014. Um, this was what they had designed that year. And you can see um, in this layout that they really got involved with the technical work here. There's a girl welding the frame together, and here there's also two girls working on our lathe. So the idea of the subsystem is to get girls comfortable by in their technical skills by working in an environment that is supportive and helps them learn. And then after, they're able to carry those same technical skills not just within this subsystem, but also in other projects in our team, and hopefully use that same confidence that they develop here in their future pursuits. And I even heard you guys were on the newspaper once. Yeah, that was actually really cool. Um, in 2016, the San Jose Mercury News ran an article on us on, sorry, <laughs> on the subsystem. So that was a pretty cool way to commemorate our project. The Girl Subsystem has also helped contribute to numerous awards that we've won at competitions. Even more than that, the Girl Subsystem has also enabled us to receive a grant from the Society of Women Engineers. So in many ways, it's changed our team. And I understand that you guys assign a subsystem on a robot every year. Um, so what subsystem did you guys work on in previous years? So in 2014, we built, which was the first year, we built the drivetrain of the robot. Uh, the drivetrain, what does that entail? Um, that includes the frame of the robot and also the wheels, the wheel assemblies, the chain runs, um, the bumper supports, and the bumpers themselves. So out of all the subsystems, why do you guys choose to design the drivetrain? <laughs> we choose to design the drivetrain because it's the one subsystem on the robot that can never be taken away. <laughs> <laughs> and I see you brought some gearboxes? Yeah. So I mentioned that in... 2014, we only designed the drivetrain frame. But in 2015, and since 2015, we've also been designing the drive gearboxes. So this was the first drive gearbox that the girls' subsystem ever designed. And then since then, we've also been designing more gearboxes. So this is another set of plates that we also designed. Oh, wow, that's really cool. The lightning hole patterns are really nice. What kind of uh, machines do you use to design those? Um, we made this on the CNC mill that we have in the house. So that was, again, done by all girls. And wow, I see the girls' subsystem has really grown throughout the years. Yeah. Um, well, it's not just grown, you know, technically. I mean, technically we have been doing more complicated stuff through the years, um, but it's also grown in other ways. Um, the pro we've noticed that the proportion of girls working in technical work has increased on our team. So that's also a good output of the subsystem. So why don't you tell us a bit about your own personal story? So I joined the team my sophomore year. Uh, I didn't join as a freshman because I was too shy and scared to join by myself. So when I joined as a sophomore, it was relieved, it was, or I was relieved to hear the, about the girls' subsystem project because I knew that it was a more friendly and inviting environment than just joining the team by myself. And within the environment, I was able to learn computer-aided design with peers. So that really helped me with my technical skills. And then after that, I was able to get more involved with other aspects of the team. So that's when I started getting involved with machining, which was, I started machining on the lathe and the CNC mill. And then after my first season, I had the opportunity to help lead the su girls' subsystem. And I think that kind of changed my perspective a little bit because it's one thing to like learn from the subsystem, but once you're a senior, it's another thing to teach the other girls because you know that you want to help develop all the talent on our team. So being able to teach the girls um, and like teach them how to do the CAD and the machining, that I thought was really rewarding. And to wrap it up, um, if, do you have any tips or advice for other teams that want to start a program like this? I think the most important thing is to make sure that 
everyone on the team is on board with this idea and that support comes from everyone on the team. Um, I think the other part that's also really important is that when you first start, obviously the girls may not know all the aspects of the design yet, so it's important that the mentors are really willing to sit down and work with them to get the project started. And then after a couple years, once um, those girls become older, they're able to teach the younger members and it becomes a self-sustaining program. Well, thanks for joining us, Ria, and see you next time. And remember, stay funky. <laughs>